Hey, thanks for joining me today. This is Pastor Lafayette, and it is Tuesday. Hard to believe we're in March already. Before we blink, it will be uh, Easter. We're in Luke chapter 23. We're down to around verse 43, 44 is where we get started. Uh, Jesus has uh, been crucified. He's hanging on the cross between two thieves. He says, Now <coughs> it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. Uh, Little discussion on when the when the veil was actually torn. Some have said that the veil was torn uh, when Jesus died, uh, signifying that 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 the veil was a, a signal of his flesh, and that through the tearing of his flesh we all have the entrance into the Father. Uh, some have also said though that the veil did not actually tear until the resurrection. I know it's worded here, and, and, and if you were to read this and you think, okay, it all happened at that moment, uh, but there has been some discussion. So, nonetheless, the veil was torn in two from the top to the bottom. It was a very, very thick cloth, and not, not just a cloth, it was, it was uh, I can't even describe it, but it was extremely thick, impossible for a human to really tear it. Uh, but torn in two. And when the veil of the temple was torn, that opened up the uh, uh, man's vision into the Holy of Holies, where the presence of God was, where the Ark of God was. Uh, there have been many, many people talk about why the veil was torn. Was it showing that God had left the temple, was no longer going to be part of temple worship? See, all they did was sew it back together and continue on with their traditions, even though Jesus had instituted a new covenant, they continued on with the old covenant, which had been done away with. So Jesus cried with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Uh, as we read in other Gospels, we realize that he said other things as well. Having said this, he breathed his last breath. When the centurion saw what had happened, uh, he glorified God, saying, "Certainly, this was a righteous man." What did he see happen? He saw that in the uh, he saw that in the daytime, when there should be sun, it was dark for three hours. Uh, they could not explain it; they don't know what happened. But that for three hours, it was dark on the face of the earth, at least where Jesus was being crucified. Uh, must have been a, a horrific, scary sight to realize that this was w happening coincidentally with Jesus' resurrection, I'm sorry, with Jesus' crucifixion and Jesus' death. That's why the centurion made the statement he made. Verse 48, the whole crowd who came together to that site, seeing what had been done, beat their breast and returned. But all his acquaintances and the women who followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching those things. Whole crowd came together, beat their chest, not like Tarzan, but, but in a, 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 you know, we are from the, we're from uh, the Western Hemisphere. Things are, are different in the Middle East. It was, you know, just the hitting their chest saying, oh my, I can't believe this has happened. But all his acquaintances and the women who followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. My friend, I will tell you today that those old acquaintances, and I, I'd love to look that word up in Greek, but, but though they are called his acquaintances, though, they are, though it's the women who followed him and those who followed him, though they stood at a distance, I tell you today, and I, and I know I talked about this a little bit yesterday. They watched it from afar, but Jesus did all that he did for them. Every ounce of, of pain and suffering that he went through, he went through for them. 
They might have been standing at a distance, but Jesus made a way for them to draw close. And if it is true, and I know that the word talks about that Jesus, his flesh was, was like the veil and that being torn, it gave access. Though people had to stay away from the Holy of Holies before, because Jesus gave himself, his flesh, there was a way made that you and I could access Father. And understand, this is not a, <clears throat> a one-time deal. Excuse me, a one-time deal or something that only happens when we die. My friend, you and I have access to Father today. We need no longer stand at a distance and just watch. You and I have, because of Jesus' sacrifice, the, uh, the ability, the right to approach our God in faith, believing, not in fear, but in faith, believing that that, that way has been made, <coughs> that he will accept us, that he will hear us, that he loves us, that he's placed his blessing upon us. My friend, today, draw close to God. Don't stand off in a distance. Don't look at the things at Calvary and say, uh, wow, Jesus did all these things for me and, and continue to look at yourself in a negative, uh, self-defeating uh, uh, perspective. He did it so that you could draw near. Draw near. Father, help us to understand that Jesus gave us access. And Lord, that has been your heart the entire time. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye.